Hi, welcome back to Escape Forever Free. I'm your girl Faith. Here we are stepping out with faith to restore physical, mental, spiritual, and social wholeness. We are inviting you to join our team and be supported as we all work tediously and tirelessly without getting weary of well-doing towards being fully surrendered to our master. Now, here we have juicing guides, we have exercise guides, and this particular video is our one hour alone time kickstart devotional guide. It is a guide aimed at helping us to spend at least one hour with God every single day. So we encourage you to select your best sacrificial time for the day or for the week, and then you turn up at that time, watch this video, and then continue at the end of this video for one hour, you and God alone. If you think this kind of program, this kind of team support is something, something that you can benefit from, we invite you to come along with us, subscribe, and join this team, this family. Again, welcome to Escape Forever Free. So now we're going to go into our one hour alone time kickstart devotional guide, starting with prayer. Our Kickstart Devotional Guide um, material is The Great Controversy. We are using the 1888 edition. We also use the King James Version of the Bible. So please get both of them and join us now. Whether it's your first or you are a return member, subscriber, or visitor, join us now as we go into this time with God. Let us pray. Holy Father, we thank you for another opportunity that we can come together, Father, to support each other in such an important and even most um, detrimental um, of all of our choices, well, most important, rather, of all of our choices that we need to make in this life as to what it is that our position is with you. So, Father, as we first of all seek to be good stewards of the life that you have lent us, we also, Father, seek to draw near to you so that we can become one with you, even as Jesus Christ, our Lord and King, is one with you. So, God Almighty, hear our prayers and answer us with mercy, we beg, and as we now go into the great controversy give us clarity of thought and understanding and as we continue to seek to draw closer to you in these one hour alone time may we truly every single minute and any measurable second that we put effort out be blessed take full control now we pray and thank you for the sabbath blessings that we would have experienced on sabbath um friday sunset to saturday sunset be thou glorified in our lives, we pray, and feed us now, we pray, with our daily bread. Amen. All right, so we're going to go into our memory text for starters. Every week we commit a text to memory. This week's memory text comes to us from Revelation, Revelation 18 and verse 1. It says, And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. Again, Revelation 18, verse 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. All right, so we pray that God will help us to commit this to memory and be able to recall it in due season, to glorify his name and to edify souls, even our very own souls. All right, so we're now going to advance into the book. We are going to pick up at page 315.1 of the Great Controversy. All right, so get your material and your Bible and let's read. So here we go. One sec. It is unto them that look for him that Christ is to appear the second time without, sorry, without sin unto salvation. Um, this is coming from Hebrews 9 and verse 28. It says, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. So clearly Christ is coming there to comment. As a conquering king and not a babe with um, the plan of salvation the plan of salvation would have by then um, given full many years 
thousands of years for us to access and then he comes there as a judge and king all right let's continue to read to light the tidings of the savior's birth the message of the second advent was not committed to the religious leaders of the people they had failed to preserve their connection with god and had refused light from heaven Therefore, they were not of the number described by the Apostle Paul in 1 Thessalonians 4, 5 rather, verses 4 and 5. Let's find it. 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 4 and 5. Can you find it? 1 Thessalonians, turn your scriptures please. 1 Thessalonians 5, and we'll be reading verses 4 and 5. All right, let us read. But ye brethren are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. All right, so there we have it. And the reading here is saying that they that... Um, failed to preserve that, that the leaders rather the religious leaders were not the one that they um the second advent message was committed to for being the champions of that message instead um they were they, they sorry instead this was passed on from them because they they failed to preserve the connection that they should have had with god all right the watchman upon is continuing to read now from the controversy. The watchman upon the walls of Zion should have been the first to catch the tidings of the Savior's advent, the first to lift their voices to proclaim him near, the first to warn the people to prepare for his coming. But they were not, they, sorry, but they were at ease, dreaming of peace and safety while the people were asleep in their sins. Jesus saw his church like the barren fig tree covered with pretentious leaves yet destitute of precious fruit there was a boastful observance of the forms of religion while the spirit of true humility penitence and faith which alone could render the service acceptable to god was lacking instead of the graces of the spirit there were manifested pride, formalism, vainglory, selfishness, oppression, sorry, selfishness and oppression. A backsliding church closed their eyes to the signs of the times. God did not forsake them or suffer his faithfulness to fail, but they departed from him and separated themselves from his love. Now, as they refused to comply with the conditions, his promises were not fulfilled to them. So there we have it. Let us not be fooled or, or um, misguided in thinking that we have an, a righted inheritance to the things concerning those who are the faithful followers of Christ. Faithfulness um, requires, sorry, the benefits and the conditions um, that are promised to us requires faithfulness from us his servants. Let's continue to read. Now such is the sure result of neglect to appreciate and improve the light and privileges which God bestows. Unless the church will follow on in his opening providence, accepting every ray of light, performing every duty which may be revealed, religion will inevitably degenerate into the observance of forms and the spirit of vital godliness will disappear that will be the case once it is that we neglect to appreciate to improve every light that we have received and also to follow every teachings dutifully that we have been given and the light reveals to us continuing to read now this truth has been repeatedly illustrated in the history of the church. God requires of his people works of faith and obedience corresponding to the blessings and privileges bestowed. Obedience requires a sacrifice and involves a cross 
And this is why so many of the professed followers of Christ refuse to receive the light from heaven. I read that again. Obedience requires a sacrifice and involves a cross. And this is why so many of the professed followers of Christ refuse to receive the light from heaven and, like the Jews of old, knew not the time of their visitation. As written in Luke 19 verse 44. Read it. Let's read it quickly. And Luke 19 verse 44 says, And shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. That was Jesus Christ here to comment, addressing Jerusalem and the leaders at the time who were um, caught up boastfully introducing him to their magnificent temple structure and he of course being in wailing over the future that was ahead of them because they did not understand the time of the, their visitation and did not act aptly and quickly upon their probational period. Lastly, so because of their pride, let's read from the controversy, because of their pride and unbelief, the Lord possessed them by and revealed his truth to those who like sorry because of their pride and unbelief the lord passed them by and revealed his truth to those who like the shepherds of bethlehem on and the eastern magi um or magi had given heed to all the light that they had received we end here and we also end chapter 17 here um, coming co across clearly from this message is that while our probational time lasts, especially for the house of God, the Bible teaches that judgment comes to the house of God first. So let me remind the saints at this point that our probational time is truly reeling to its end. And if we let Jerusalem refuse the truth that is to lead us to all light and all full surrender and receiving of our sealing, then like them in the majority, we will be destroyed with the very temples that we worship. All right, our worship in whatever our situations is. In other words, all forms of godliness are in, are in need of being converted entirely into true worship. May God help us as we all work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Let us go to the last singing of this hymn because it, um, it was for the chapter and the chapter just ended. Um, let's just go to the last singing of stanza one from number 205, Gleams of the Golden Morning for this um, video, for this chapter. The golden morning is fast approaching, Jesus soon will come to take his faithful and happy children to our promised home. I want you to see the gleams of the golden morning piercing through our nights of gloom. Can you see the gleams of the golden morning? Well, they shall burst the tombs. Let us pray as we bring this chapter of the great controversy to a close. Holy and righteous Father, you have brought us through another chapter and we have learned so much from it. As we continue to review and reflect on what was revealed to us from these chapters and also from the scriptures that we read during the reading of this chapter, I beg and pray that we will respond to all the light that we would have received in it appropriately and genuinely. I pray God that we will not be afraid to search and receive further light as the opportunity or the light itself is present to us. Have mercy upon us as we each and every one work out our salvation with fear and trembling because indeed based on the signs of the times, the door of probation for most of us is barely ajar. If not, for some of us, like the house, those from the household of faith, is not already almost totally closed. 
Save us in your kingdom, we beg. May all here who desire to receive that mercy and that blessing, may none of us be missing when you come. In Jesus' name, amen. Let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be known always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Please continue with God for one hour, you and him alone, and continue to seek and search after truth and light. It is written in the blueprint, the holy scriptures. God bless you, and may we be saved through the blood of the Lamb and the obedience of our works. <laughs>